In today's video, we'll be reviewing my favorite non-return valve, the moose valve. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. I also teach Skype and online lessons, but more on that later. I do want everyone to know I am not sponsored by Moose. They don't know I'm making this video. I just think this is a tremendous product and I wanted to share it with you guys. So I've talked about this particular product in a number of videos, and I thought I would do just a short review and a kind of breakdown of the moose valve, the non-return valve. Now, on a lot of blowpipes, you're going to have the non-return valve at the end of the blowpipe itself. But with the moose valve, it actually lives inside the blowpipe stock. Now, this isn't a blowpipe stock, but you get the idea. It's not attached and it is inserted using a special tool. So if there, I guess, is a downside, uh, it's that if you lose this tool, uh, you're gonna have a hard time getting this thing out. So I often mark mine with a little piece of tape, something so uh, it's a little easier to see if it gets lost in the case or something. So let's talk about this valve right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take it apart, which I do on pretty much a weekly basis to clean. I'll actually just throw this whole thing in a cup of hydrogen peroxide. So the primary part of the valve right here has the valve on the end of it there we go so you can see the valve right there um this is integral you cannot take this valve off to replace so if this breaks off the moose valve you are going to have to well purchase a new moose valve it comes assembled i just wanted to take it apart to show all the bits so see at the bottom of this you can see it's at a 45 degree angle when we install this kind of latexy bit uh, around it and then we're going to put another kind of a washer, if you will, with a 45 degree angle on it the other way. Then as you screw this down with the tool, it's going to force that bit, that soft bit out and expand so that it will fit inside your stock. So when I go to install one of these, I want to make sure that it's pretty snug upon entry. You don't want it to just fall into your bag. Then you have this tool which locks into that little metal bar. There's you see here, there's a, you can kind of go in, twist just one direction. So we're going to put it in. You want to put it in a little bit lower than the length of the tenon on your blowpipe. And the reason for that is the design of this is such that latex bit as it expands outward makes a seal. And there's a chimney of sorts between the edges of the blowpipe stock and the moose valve itself. And that actually can collect an awful lot of moisture, but it needs to be able to get to that. If you actually have the end of your blowpipe resting right against the end of the moose valve, well, the moisture is just going to blow right through the valve rather than being allowed to kind of collect around the edges of the stock and kind of drip down. But this can collect an awful lot of moisture. You can take the blowpipe out and just pour, and then you just put it in and absolutely airtight and and very free flowing um, a very little resistance and as long as you keep your valve clean and this isn't just for moose valve it's for any valve it it tends to open nice and easy you don't want to have to have it like kind of click or force open and if the bottom of your valve moose or otherwise starts getting kind of nasty you might actually have to like kind of pop it open and you don't want to do that because well that's going to make your blowing less steady as you're going into the bag and we want a nice steady flow of air. So, no air is coming out. And then to take it out, and I take mine out at the end of every playing session. Some people don't do that. It's gonna get a kind of, it gets really wet. So do what you need to do for you, but I like taking mine out. And so just twist it, put, insert the tool, twist it, it comes out. It'll probably be kind of nasty. Have a paper towel ready if you've been playing uh, or another towel of something. Uh, and if you just rinse this off just under some water, um, you probably don't even really need to do the hydrogen peroxide soak like I like to do. I'm a bit of a clean freak, so I like keeping my pipes rather um, as clean as I can keep them. But if you just rinse it off, I'm sure it's fine. But I would definitely take it out and clean it. Don't let your valve get nasty. So what I'm curious about here is exactly how much moisture can this hold? And I'm going to grab a little uh, measuring cup and we're gonna to try to pour some moisture right in here. And I'm gonna figure out exactly how much moisture this moose valve can hold. Stay tuned. 
I have 30 milliliters of water in here and I'm gonna see if I can pour some moisture, some water into this and see. Okay, that is now level. It looks like it held exactly five milliliters of water. So not a ton, but that's still direct wet moisture, not making it into the bag. And any moisture we can kind of keep out of the bag, especially in liquid form, the better. So again, to remove, all I'm gonna do is stick the tool in here and hook it around that metal bit, unscrew, and voila. Remember, it will be wet when you take it out. So just be mindful of that. Something I did want to say really quick is if you use some sort of tube trap, it doesn't mean you can't use the moose valve, but it probably means you won't be able to have the tube trap fit all the way in. A lot of these have quite a long tenon on them. If you put them all the way in, it's going to interfere with the flapper on the moose valve, but there's a way around it. You can see here, I've actually built up the hemp or the string on this, but you could also use a zip tie and then put some string up and around that so that it's not allowing it to insert fully into the bottom of the blowpipe stock, but still lets it have a nice airtight fitting or watertight fitting in particular here, being a moisture control, and still have room for the moose valve. So figure out how deep it can seat. It might take a little bit of trial and error, but you can make a tube trap work with the moose valve. You just gotta kinda think about it a little bit. All right, everybody, a shorter video, uh, but I did want folks to know about the moose valve. I own several of these. I actually have one as a spare in my pipe case uh, at all times, plus the ones for each one of my sets of pipes. I probably own four or five of these at this point. It's kind of like I don't leave home without it. And by having this in the stock, I don't have to worry about protecting the end of my blowpipe. So if you have a normal flapper valve at the end of this, those work fine, but you should probably have some sort of cap or protective bit around the end of the blowpipe. And to be honest, that can allow all of the ends of this to get kind of, well, gross because you're gonna have to put a cap on it that's gonna force the moisture that's in here to kind of stay in there. Most of those caps are plastic. So I don't know, this I can, run a brush through my blowpipe quickly. I don't have to worry about damaging the valve. This valve comes out if I do feel the need to dry out my blowpipe stock. Uh, I don't know. I just think it's a great solution. I think it's a great design. Um, if the valve was actually replaceable, I guess that'd be the one extra bonus that you wouldn't have to replace the whole thing. But I suspect the various mechanisms that have to go on here to make it user serviceable might reduce the amount of airflow or, or make it just a little bit clunkier and certainly would raise the price a little bit. So these last many, many, many years, I mean, I play just about every day and uh, I think I've had one of these flappers fail and you know, it was after five or so years of playing on it, so. Well, thank you so much for watching everybody. If you got something out of the video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel and sharing with any other pipers you think might, well, could learn about the moose valve here. I also have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a really long way. You'll see some names scrolling probably rather quickly of some fine folks that are contributing monthly. I'd love to add your name to this list. You often get early access to my videos and a few other perks. So head over to the Patreon page there and check it out. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me at the address you see here and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet. I'd love to work with you too. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise with cups and hoodies and hats and t-shirts and all sorts of stuff. Go check that out. Get yourself some bagpipe merchandise and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'm Matt Willis, Bagpiper, and until next time, cheers. Cheers.